If you want a shot of politics with your Java, drop by Kaylin Harris's coffee shop. But are you voting this year? You, you know, oh, yeah. can I ask who, you, who you're supporting? He's a longtime Green Party supporter, positively buzzing about this election. I think it, what it is is it comes down to people uh, having um, an actual viable option right now. Um, the NDP uh, and the Greens. Huh? The Green Party? Really? But next door to Elizabeth May's riding in the riding of Victoria, where climate change and oil tankers are big issues, the Greens only narrowly lost the last by-election. I have huge empathy for what the Greens are doing. I have huge empathy for what the NDP are doing. Now they're looking to former CBC radio host Joanne Roberts to get the job done. I was going to vote for Green. Really? Can I give you a hug? <laughs> People in BC have been leaders. In, on this front. We have been leaders on the environmental movement. I mean, it's not by accident. I like to think by electing more MPs here on the island, we give voice to people across the country who wanted to vote Green. That's not whimsy if you believe the polls. In a recent one, the Greens are running second to the NDP on Vancouver Island with 32% support. I'm running for the Green Party in the upcoming election. Far ahead of the Liberals and Conservatives. The real fight in the island is between the NDP and the Greens, and this would have been unheard of four, eight, 12 years ago to have the two dominant parties in the country essentially at fringe status and the NDP and the Greens fighting for all of the seats in the island. That means in Victoria, NDP incumbent Murray Rankin finds himself defending his green flank. You'll see what I've done in my years, two years and a half since I was elected. It's a bit odd given his credentials. He's a former environmental lawyer, a vocal critic of the Northern Gateway Pipeline. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much. The Environmental Defense Fund said we had the best position of all the parties on the issue of climate change. And so environment and climate change are a big issue oh, of here course they in are. Victoria yeah. and Vancouver Island. And there seem to be, there seems to be a surge of people who are going to the Green Party rather than the NDP. What, 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 does, does that worry you? I, I think an orange tide is raising all ships. <laughs> On Vancouver Island and across Canada, people are getting that the NDP is the vehicle to get rid of the Harper government. ABC, anyone but conservative, is a familiar refrain here. I'm just like, please, yeah. please not a majority <laughs> Stephen Harper government. <laughs> but where to cast that vote? Catherine Calder of the band New Pornographers typically votes NDP, but she's going green. Her musical mate, Ryan Beatty, is opting for NDP, but... But I also would like to see more greens. And that's sort of another point, whereas, I mean, the NDP have said that if they form, you know, a minority, they'll try to get proportional representation, which is strategic in the sense that next time, then you have, like, then you can vote your, you know, I mean, then you get your green vote, it's going to count for something even more, right? I think a lot of it has to do with Elizabeth May and the fact that she's just such a determined person. I mean, I just feel that politics in Canada are better off if she's in them if she's in politics and if she's, you know, at the debates with the other guys, you uh, know. Elizabeth May is making a difference. Yeah, she's making a difference. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Do you know Joanne Roberts? Yes, uh, we just met. Hi, James. You look very familiar to me. It's nice to meet you. It all has Elizabeth May talking breakthrough. I'm so clear on it because I've seen what's happening across the country. Especially in BC, where the Greens hope to win as many as five seats. Okay, this is the four. <laughs> If you don't have Greens in the, in the House of Commons, climate change is unlikely to be part of the conversation. I say to people, you know, it, electing Greens, as we have seen by electing Elizabeth May, makes a difference. Yeah, very nice to meet you. Still, they're keenly aware their soft support tends to disappear in the voting booth. We've seen it in federal elections, we've seen it in BC elections. The level of support for the Greens starts to taper as we get closer to the election day. And the essence for them, if they want to get more seats than the one they already have, is to try to keep to, try to maintain that support as much as they can and essentially uh, use the tools at their disposal to get people elected. Oh, Georgia, <laughs> you're, uh, you're the... <laughs> She's so cute. Yeah. I bet you've been told that before, eh? How are you, Madeline? <laughs>
How you doing? Murray Rankin will tell you the Greens have no chance at forming government, and that's all that matters. People understand that if you want to get rid of Stephen Harper, we have to get more seats than the Conservatives. This has been an NDP seat for 10 years. We must hold it if we're going to put Prime Minister Mulcair in Paris at that climate conference. And is that going to be by phone canvas? Yeah, because um, we're limited in how we can get yeah, in the door exactly. there. To fight that messaging. A recent poll by Inside West found that uh, supporter for the Green Party is surging. The Greens are spending significant amounts of their limited resources. Yeah, that's great. Would you like a lawn sign? On winning Victoria with a small army of paid staff who know just one more seat would be a big victory. Back at the coffee shop. A vote for Green, if you want to vote Green, isn't uh, a throwaway vote. The future of the Greens in Canada may ride on voters buying that. Duncan McHugh, CBC News, Victoria.